Madison, show us what you just found. This is really cool. So we're here at Delanor Wiggins State Park and Madison just found the holy grail of beach finds as far as we're concerned and don't lose it. Shark's tooth, a big one too. I mean, usually you'd find little itty bitties. Look at that, you see the root down here at the bottom and the point and the serrated edges and everything. Those are hard to find, wow. Hopefully we find another one here. Hold it in your hand so I can see it. Let me see if I can focus on it a little better. That is gorgeous, you're gonna make a nice necklace out of that. You can tell them you wrestled that shark in on your own. So now we're, we're thinking, well, if they're here, we're going to kind of search this area over a little bit better, see if we can find another one. Rob's right behind us. We'll have to brag and tell him that we found one. All right? Are you going to show him? Sure. All right. I hope you're brave enough. You're awfully shy, Madison. We just got back from our vacation, and the last minute or so, we were at Delanor Wiggins Pass State Park. And you girls found something there that we want to share and do a little show and tell. What did you girls find? Shark teeth. And not only did you girls find shark's teeth, these are very special shark's teeth. They're fossilized shark's teeth, both of them. And we can tell that because you can just simply tell they're a fossil. They were black and they're made out of the minerals that they were buried in for a very, very long time, and we'll get into that in a minute. So I want to show everybody this, these teeth one at a time. Oh, that's good. So isn't that beautiful? Look at that shark's tooth. Now here's the thing. This isn't just any old shark's tooth. First off, it's a fossil. Fossils take 10,000 years to make. This is a megalodon shark's tooth. Isn't that cool? Do you girls know how long ago they lived? No. The Megalodon went extinct 2.6 million years ago. And they lived from about 15 million years ago to 2.6 million years ago. That's the last fossil record that they have of any Megalodon fossils, whether it be the jawbone or the teeth, which is all you can grab because they're made out of cartilage otherwise and those that rots away. So this tooth is older than 2.6 million years. Pretty crazy. And it hasn't been unearthed for very long because if it was, it would be nearly gone. It would be eroded away. There's a few characteristics of this tooth that make it most definitely a megalodon tooth. And it's not the size because it's very small. So this is a baby megalodon tooth, an infant almost. And there's a few things, the serrations, the serrations right at the edge, and you can see them there. They're, they're worn away a little bit by the surf. So they're not as prominent, but the not as prominent, and I'll show you some of the things that I found, is actually very important. So if we look at serrations like we have, the larger serrations on the great white, See, they're very defined here and big serrations on a great white. This is a great white tooth. Very small, just like ours, very small on a, a megalodon tooth. This explains that there's these two lobes versus the more straight root, which this has one of the lobes broken off. This used to be lobed down to here. And this one also has a little bit broken off of it. So you can tell at one point in time, we had the same lobe that they described there. Another characteristic of a megalodon. So when you have the two to compare to. So what we have here is a chevron shaped brulette, just like in the picture on the computer. It's the same exact thing. Now this tooth is a dead ringer for that megalodon tooth. Boulette. And you can see that there is none here on the great white. And the, if I've shown this before, I don't remember, the smaller serrations like we have, 
the larger serrations on the great white. Plus you notice the, the triangulation and the profile of the tooth is more like what we have here, right? See the great white is more slender. And if we could see a side profile, we'd see that it was more slender, more like a blade of a knife instead of this almost club-like tooth. And if we go down even further, and again, you can kind of tell just from the front view the, the robustness of the tooth with the small serrations. See the larger ones here. Um, the other thing is, is just, just the shape of the tooth. You can tell by the picture, a megalodon tooth is, is very robust in this direction here, just like ours. And this boulette is, uh, is very, protrudes quite a bit. So that is really what tells us that this was a megalodon tooth is the, the, the faint serrations, the small serrations, all the way evenly up and down the entire tooth, the robust root and the exposed boulette, which is a French word that I looked it up online and that's how they say it's pronounced, but I think French people might pronounce it boulet. I don't know. Um, so anyway, that is the first megalodon tooth. And as I said, we found another one. It's even a little bit smaller and it's a different shape. The reason it's a different shape, oh, there's a good, is because it's from the back of the mouth. Like back here. Uh, the way, way back of the mouth. And the, the way I learned that is there are photographs of an entire jawbone of a megalodon and you can simply look at the teeth and see this particular profile in the very back of the mouth. So this was a, another small tooth um, and uh, the serrations are very difficult to see, but they're there. If I get this at the right angle, you'll be able to see them. Let me just spin it around. Oh, there, you can kind of see them right over here. Let me see if I can zoom in more. And so if you can kind of just see, this one probably spent a little bit more time in the surf, but you see the little lines right there? So serrated. So that's key. If this tooth was smooth, it could have been another shark, but it's not. It was serrated. And of course, both teeth have a little bit of damage. This one's got a chipped tip. And, um, the and the other it's also it's starting the the little chevron shaped boulette like it has to have to be a, a megalodon and the very robust root those are the characteristics that make it a oh and look we can just see you can see just see this the light the very faint serrations right there you see them let's do do like a side by side comparison look at that isn't that amazing megalodon tooth versus um let's see if we can get a good one that looks a lot like this one they all do now well anyway we'll isn't that interesting and let's see if they have one that looks like maggie's tooth see we're getting more into that yeah Exactly. So it says juvenile megalodon tooth from Georgia. That's a pretty good picture. We're kind of winging this, guys. We're amateurs. So you can see the similarities there. Now, if this was a fossilized white shark, which there are white shark fossils, it would be... There we go. It wouldn't have that exposed boulette. And the shape would be slightly different. Um, although the two sharks are very similar. So there's conflicting, so here's the neat thing. There's conflicting um, theories as to the um, nature of how they evolved. At one point in time, humans thought that white sharks evolved from megalodons, but they now don't believe that's true. They believe that they evolved side by side with each other from one single shark. So they're more so cousins. And um, eventually when the earth started to cool, the great white sharks that were very good at living and adept to living in, in cold water were able to travel to colder parts of the world and eat. And they didn't need to eat as much because they weren't as big. 
and basically the megalodons were so large they ate themselves out of house and home the other the other thing and then went extinct the other thing that's neat about where we found these in florida is florida is considered a nursery for megalodon sharks that's why we're finding baby teeth how big is this this one's pretty big two and a half inches long two and a half inches from here to here so that one's pretty big ours is only three quarters of an inch and it was hard to find oh that's what i wonder if Oh yeah. So see, here's our, our, here's our megalodon jaw. And if we look way back here, we see our other teeth. Did we show the other tooth, the smaller and a slightly different profiled tooth way back here. So that's what we found is we have some baby megalodon teeth and look, here's Madison's tooth is right up in here somewhere. And it's hard to tell from this picture, but you can see, look at this tooth here. Can you see the profile? See how the belly part is facing in? Because they, they rather roll up out of the mouth as these new rows come in. And, and the sharks are losing, there's so many teeth in the ocean. So these two were probably unearthed in Irma. That would be my guess. Irma churned up the bottom of the ocean and unearthed these two teeth and threw them up on the beach at Delanor Wiggins Pass State Park. And then we picked them up. How awesome is that? Here. So I thought that was pretty cool. I hope I got some good footage of the, of these things. It's really hard. I have this light with a diffuser over it or a piece of typing paper. But here, let's get them both in the image and see what I can do here as far as this will be crazy, huh? Um, where's the other one? There it is. Oh, yeah. Maggie, go ahead and um, enlarge it. Zoom. And then click. There we go. There's some focus. Just click again. There we go. You can see the serrations on the bigger one. Um, and I'm shaking, but and you can kind of see the serrations there. But, but those are really, really interesting finds. I'll tell you what. A megalodon tooth, 2.6 million years old at least, and just a dead ringer for a megalodon tooth. This is the classic one, right? And this is the one that comes from the back of the mouth. But interesting all the same. So... And I'll tell you what, if anybody's watching this and knows more about megalodon teeth than we do, please chime in. Please drop a comment below because we'd love to hear it. If you're a collector or a marine biologist and know more than we do. At first, we went round and round thinking maybe this smaller one was a snaggle tooth or a tiger shark, but simply isn't the right shape. Isn't that great? Look at that beautiful tooth. Hmm. What a find, to find something so whole. We have a small little broken spot here, and there's a missing lobe on the root, and otherwise a little chip down here, but otherwise this tooth is almost complete. Really crazy. If this was left on the beach for too much longer, it would have become even more polished and unrecognizable. We got really lucky. So there we are. Two megalodon teeth on the end of pencils, duct taped to the end of pencils. Pretty neat. The end. That's really cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So they're 2.6 million years old. Outrageous that you found something that was that old. I don't even know how old that is. It's a lot. It's a lot old. All right, this is the end of our movie. Please comment if you know what these are, if you're positive they are or aren't megalodon teeth. And, uh, We'll be on to our next movie. I have a couple more movies to post about our vacation. And we were super happy to find these things. And uh, we'll see you guys next time from the Marine Laboratory and Research Center. Right? That's what this turned into with my, my fancy light and my computer and everything else. So.